this is a documentary about Bobby Mackey's country music world, electronic voice phenomenon, and other ITC experiments that I've conducted at Bobby Mackey's country music world. We're also going to take a little bit of a dive into some of the people that are involved with the location and its bizarre history. Now, when uh, George Remus had had it, he owned one of the distilleries over there. They had a tunnel that went underneath this road from our building here to the distillery. In 1968, when the feds came in and raided the Latin quarter for the final time, they filled that in. They also filled in the well so that we could use that tunnel anymore to run liquor or alcohol. Now, this area right here is where that great big carriage house used to sit burnt down. Uh, we had a witness that had been here back in the day, there was a kid at the time that said he saw a man actually get shot who was standing in the driveway right here that went back to this. He said that when he got shot, he was 20 feet back and that one hit him. It was not like what you see in the movies at all. So, so this was the structure that, that caught on fire in like 1978 or something? Out here was. Yeah. Right, it's gone, it doesn't exist. Now if you're lucky enough to catch a train parked here, you should take pictures because a lot of times we get full body apparitions of a men coming from the railroad cars to the club. Mm. A lot of times they are neon green outlined or neon white outlined. I just noticed a little while ago something new for me, but apparently they used to have another entrance that came up in here because there was a doorbell and a window. So many things have happened at this location that it's undoubtedly one of the most haunted places that I've ever investigated. And uh, I've really just become kind of obsessed with the place. And uh, I've visited it on multiple occasions, conducted at least four full investigations there. And uh, I feel like it's given me a specific kind of insight into the property, into the history, into the kind of feelings of the environment. I mean, you really only have to go there to experience it. Um, most of the time, people who travel to the location end up having some type of experience, or someone that they're with does. There's a lot of people who have claimed to have brought things home with them. By things I mean spirits, ghosts, demons. I mean, after all, there is supposed to be a portal to hell in the basement. There's been quite a bit of attention given to the basement at Bobby Mackey's. The uh, original caretaker of the property, Carl Lawson, who's now deceased, claimed to have had some very intense paranormal spiritual kind of experiences there in the basement in particular he claimed that there was a haunting apparition that was telling him that he needed to find something in the basement that there was something there that he needed to uncover and as it turns out he started tearing up the floor and uh, he found a well and he claimed to have found a diary that kind of was destroyed in a paranormal way. Uh, so there was not really any proof that there was a diary. But he did uncover the well and unfortunately 
succumb to what many people believe was a terrible possession caused by living in Bobby Mackey's country music world, spending so much time there, and just becoming generally obsessed with the property himself. Here's a little bit of that uh, footage from The Exorcism. Because he knows that I've got something in me that's greater than him. And I've got something in me that's greater than you, Charlie. You understand that? You understand that? Huh? Oh, no. No. Carl's fighting. No, no. That's the little son of a bitch. You listen to me. That's the little son of a bitchy Carl. No. He's fighting. Carl is not that. Carl's a good person. Now, you, it's time for you to leave. I try to keep him away. I try to keep him away from church. Well, ever since he was a little kid, all he wanted to do was go to school and pray. That's all he ever wanted to do. But I got him riding around here on his bicycle uh, one day, and he didn't know what happened to him when he found his $5 in the back. I know he didn't know what happened to him, but you did. And he entertained you, and now that you're trying to take him over, and you're trying to rule his life, and I'm here to put a stop to it. You understand that? You understand that, Charlie? Carl's so fucking stupid. You understand that, Charlie? Yeah. And I, you quit telling Carl he's stupid. You hear me? You understand me? Okay. Now I'm telling you, it's time for you to leave. Now, whether or not you believe in demons, demonic possession, spiritual obsession, or possession or anything like that Carl definitely believed that he was possessed the person who was doing the exorcism believed that he was possessed and a lot of other people do as well as it turns out Carl had spent a lot of time in his life around the property before he was actually working for Bobby Mackey you can, uh, you can kind of catch that when he's talking about when he was riding around there when he was a kid and that this Charlie character who seems to be possessing him caught him one day. He's talking about finding five dollars and he didn't know what happened to him. So it seems that something happened to Carl Lawson that day that impacted him in a pretty terrible way. Spirit communication plays a pretty big role in paranormal investigation. Over time, the techniques that are used to communicate with spirits have changed, but it's basically the same idea. It really is just a matter of the type of devices you use or mediums, either an actual medium or uh, whatever tools you decide to use, like an electronic voice recorder or a digital voice recorder or a magnetic recorder or even a video camera. Uh, a lot of the times people have found that their evidence will um, not match up. For instance, they'll catch something on a video recording, but they won't catch it on an audio recording. Now, at Bobby Mackey's, I have found some Class A EVPs, which is, in my opinion, these EVPs and other people who have examined them are clear, uh, actually anomalous events or audio events. And I have a few of those that I've collected here and uh, that are related to the site in particular um, in the basement of the location where a lot of the activity that I've captured as far as EVP goes has occurred. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, you guys can listen to that now and we'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. The basement is where I experienced the most intense uh, paranormal experiences. Uh, that's actually where I caught my first Class A EVP on uh, on a digital recorder. Um, it was really one of the most bizarre experiences that I've ever had in my life. Uh, I had heard EVP, I had captured EVP, I had actually heard disembodied voices on different investigations in different locations. But never had I heard something quite like this. Just 
one of the most intelligent, sneaky, underhanded kind of messages that I had ever received from the dead. I'll go ahead and play that EVP here for you in just a second. Let me go ahead and describe the scenario. We had come to the end of our tour slash investigation uh, that Wanda Kay was conducting and we were actually down in the basement in a part um, that was kind of totally in the back kind of the farthest point away in the basement from the door and we were all sitting around in chairs in a circle we had decided to do an EVP experiment Wanda had borrowed my EMF meter and was going around um, walking around the circle and she would put it next to us and when she put it on the right side of us nothing happened but when she put it on the left side of us it would always go off and so it came my turn and she came to me and she put it next to me and it went off and I asked who is to the left of me and then this is the response that I got and that's the original version that I got as a direct response I'll play that one more time and now I'll play a cleaned up quieter version where you might be able to hear the exact words and then I'll play it one more time uh, just so you can really catch it so yeah that's what I heard wish they didn't know I was here so the weird thing about that is that this voice this disembodied voice was either talking to itself or talking to someone else that was with it and that is even more terrifying after straining to hear into that terrifying vista of reality it took me about another year and some months to get back to Bobby Mackey's to do a second investigation I went there with a different team of people we had uh, varying results that were still very startling uh, and I got a direct response about the EVP that I was talking about in the last section I was I've of course been completely consumed by this idea since since I experienced this uh, and I captured this EVP so it had been on my mind I went back to the location and I asked who it was again and in the next section here I'm going to describe what happened when I asked that question I'm sitting here going over the audio that I captured in the basement at uh, Bobby Mackey's Country Music World on our last trip, our return trip there, uh, while we were doing an EVP session in the basement. Now, last time I was there, uh, I was down in the basement, and I asked the question, who is to the left of me? And the response that I captured was, I wish they didn't know that I was here. So on my return trip, I was down in the basement and I was asking um, who it was that had spoken to me and who they were talking to. Now I am going to go ahead and play the original EVP and then I'm going to play what I believe is a response uh, to my question, a kind of an indirect response or a, uh, a conversation that is again that seems to be being carried carried out by two different people um, that obviously aren't visible in the room and um, it's a, a a response and then a response to that so I'll go ahead and play the original uh, EVP and then I'll play the one that I just captured and I'll see what you guys think about it here we go I would like for the person who spoke about me, about our group, 
to come forward and give me their name. There, did you hear that? It didn't bother me. I'll go ahead and play that again. And one more time. Pretty intense, right? Well, here's the response to that. So here it is all together now. Okay, so pick that apart and uh, go ahead and tell us what you think. Um, I've got a lot more stuff to go over. Uh, there's a lot of stuff uh, that I found. So this is the first little piece and check it out and let me know. All I have captured varying amounts and varying degrees of paranormal evidence. Uh, the particular EVP that I captured of Bobby Mackey is the first time that I went there with a handheld digital recorder uh, that I actually, that not only I heard, but the people I, that I was with her as well, uh, was pretty much what's cemented uh, the fact that EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, is real and that I have experienced it indefinitely. It's kind of hard to argue with that. Um, there's a lot of things that could play into effect when you're when you're doing things like electronic voice phenomenon and using all these different techniques. I mean, there's pareidolia. You can uh, your brain will just get confused. It'll start looking for patterns. It'll start looking for words. And, you know, anything that that can help make sense of the noise. But sometimes it just is what it is, and it's, and that's what it is in this case.